today and Bahrain is basically what's been happening since March when the GCC forces mainly made up of Saudi Arabia and the UAE came into the country. And it's basically continued protests uh, almost on a daily basis or nightly basis. And the government continues to use excessive force against protesters. Um, the killings are still ongoing, the torture is still ongoing, the arrests, the sackings and so on. Of course, as a Bahraini, it does influence me personally. Um, and on another level, my family has been also very affected. I've had five family members put in prison and tortured. Uh, my father, who's a prominent human rights activist and well-known internationally, uh, was beaten unconscious in front of my family, arrested, severely tortured, um, and then sentenced to life imprisonment. Um, so, of course, this does take a toll. This isn't a case that's unique to my family. It's actually something that's become the reality for many, many families in Bahrain. And that's why, it, within my work, it's always become fixated on there are many cases out there and I can't focus on my family's case uh, because it's, it's a lot bigger than that. It's a lot bigger than just my family and what's happening to us. There are several countries around the world that are now selling arms to Bahrain. And of course it's very concerning because when you have countries that talk about human rights and democracy and all these different values and then sell arms to authoritarian regimes like the Bahraini government or the Saudi government which is taking part in the crackdown in Bahrain, um, then it becomes a question of are they really acting based on their values or is it about making an extra buck through these arms sales. In Bahrain, it's simpler to deal with the situation than the other countries because, uh, because of how susceptible the government is to international public pressure. And uh, one of the things that I think is important to know about Bahrain is that people in Bahrain are not calling for a foreign military intervention. They actually reject foreign interventions, whether it's Saudi Arabia, Iran, or otherwise. The only thing they're asking for is enough international pressure to stop the human rights violations because the Bahraini people are more than capable of making their own demands by themselves and reaching their aspirations. They don't need help with that. It's only uh, human rights violations that need to stop. And I think that's where it becomes um, very clear. These double standards become very clear because when it comes to human rights, there is no gray area. It's black and white. You either support it or you don't. And so I think it should be that simple to the Western governments. It's either they support human rights in Bahrain or they don't. And from what it looks like right now, they're not really supportive of human rights. The people in Bahrain feel like they've been completely abandoned by the governments abroad. And so when they make appeals today, it's never to these governments. Their appeals are always directed at the public of these different countries. In the UK, people have the power of their votes. Uh, they're able to influence government decisions and they're able to influence policies. And that's through telling politicians here that something needs to be done about Bahrain. And so I think change is only going to come to Bahrain. Public pressure and stopping human rights violations in Bahrain is only going to come if it comes from the people of these different countries. If people here in the UK decided to you know, go out and say enough is enough and human rights violations need to stop. And our government can't be friends and allies with a government that's authoritarian and violating human rights. I think that's when we're going to see a change in policies. The fact that the UK government is selling arms to Bahrain and at the same time saying that they're putting pressure on the government to make human rights or to make reforms, I think is uh, very hypocritical. If you're really serious about pushing through these values of human rights and democracy and um, respecting the citizens, then you shouldn't be, be selling arms to a country that uses them against the civilians. And I think that's a message that needs to be sent very clearly to the UK government along with the others that stop the arms sales now.